Welcome back! In today's video, we're going to be talking about escitalopram or Lexapro and sertraline or Zoloft. And this is in response to one of my patients who actually requested that I make a video comparing these two medications. So when we're looking at two different medications, we have to look at some comparisons. So in this video, we're going to compare how they work, what they're used for, some common side effects, some considerations to think about, and my final thoughts. So without further ado, here we go. So first of all, how do they work? Well, both of them are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs. Sertraline is an SSRI plus a weak dopamine transport inhibitor. So the dopamine transport inhibition increases dopamine, which helps improve energy, motivation, and concentration. So when you combine sertraline with bupropion, this effect is enhanced. The sigma-1 receptor binding is less understood, but it's said to attribute to sertraline's anxiolytic effects and also makes it helpful for treating uh, psychotic symptoms of depression. Escitalopram, on the other hand, is a pure SSRI. So it's gonna go in there and target those serotonin transport systems, inhibit the release of serotonin, and increase your overall serotonin levels, and that's how it helps to boost mood and treat depression. So what are they used for? Well, Lexapro or escitalopram was FDA approved in 2002 to treat major depressive disorder in ages 12 and older and generalized anxiety disorder. The therapeutic doses of escitalopram are 10 to 20 milligrams. Sertraline was FDA approved in 1991 for major depressive disorder, and by 1999, it was approved for premenstrual dysphoric disorder, panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder in ages six and older, post-traumatic stress disorder, and social anxiety disorder. Therapeutic doses of sertraline are between 50 and 200 milligrams. Now keep in mind that you can use escitalopram and sertraline off-label to treat all of these different disorders and conditions. Now when we're talking about side effects, the common side effects of sertraline are nausea, diarrhea, insomnia, dry mouth, fatigue, dizziness, and somnolence. With escitalopram, those common side effects are headaches, nausea, somnolence, insomnia, and dry mouth. When it comes to weight gain, both of these medications are thought to be weight neutral, so there really isn't any reports of significant increase in weight or causing weight gain. However, sertraline has been shown in about 7% of patients to cause a loss of appetite, which may lead to weight loss. And therefore, sertraline is sometimes used off-label to treat binge eating disorder. And escitalopram has no data indicating weight gain or weight loss, therefore it's thought to be weight neutral. And like I've mentioned before with this whole issue on weight gain and antidepressants, if that's going to be the case, it's typically because it's increasing your appetite. And so therefore you just really have to be mindful of what you're eating, the types of food that you're satisfying those cravings with. Stay away from refined carbohydrates, refined sugars and processed foods. Stick to low calorie options, fruits and vegetables to satisfy those cravings and you will have a less impact on your weight. The other side effect that many of you get concerned about is sexual dysfunction. Well, sexual dysfunction can occur with many antidepressants and sertraline and escitalopram are no different. When you look at those percentages with escitalopram, two to 12% of males will report some type of sexual dysfunction and 3% of females will report this. 
With sertraline, three to 8% of males will report some type of sexual dysfunction and 4% of women will report or have reported a decreased libido. Now, moving on to some considerations. Now, because they're both antidepressants, the same rare and dangerous side effects that apply to all the antidepressants that I've mentioned in this video will apply to both sertraline and escitalopram. Also keep in mind with drug interactions that if you're taking a blood thinner or a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory like ibuprofen on a regular basis, you can increase your risk for bleeding and bruising. And like with all the antidepressants, you have to be careful with taking other medications that can increase serotonin and lead to serotonin syndrome, which I discuss in this video. Now, sertraline is a weak inhibitor of the CYP2D6 enzyme and the CYP3A4. Therefore, you have to be careful and there are some drug interactions with sertraline, but because it is a weak inhibitor, it's not as many drug interactions as some other antidepressants. Now, escitalopram is not an inhibitor or an inducer of any of the CYP enzymes. However, it is metabolized by two separate enzymes, the CYP3A4 and the CYP2C19. And because it has two separate pathways for metabolism, even though you may pair it with an inhibitor or inducer of those enzymes, it's typically not going to affect the metabolism of escitalopram, but it's always good to make sure that you do your cross-reference checks in those drug interaction checkers and put all the medications that you're taking in there and let your provider know all of the medications that you're taking, including those over-the-counter medications, so that way you can assess and evaluate if there are any potential interactions that could be harmful to you. So, my final thoughts. Both escitalopram and sertraline are effective medications to treat depression and various anxiety disorders. However, there is some evidence that suggests that escitalopram may be more effective in treating major depressive disorder and panic disorder versus sertraline. Escitalopram also tends to be a first-line treatment choice when you're looking at starting a patient on an antidepressant who's never taken an antidepressant before because of its tolerability and less side effects. In my opinion, sertraline tends to be more effective in treating patients with post-traumatic stress disorder and for those patients with a good mix of anxiety and depression. I find that between sertraline and escitalopram, sertraline tends to be more effective in treating those disorders. However, when you're trying to decide which medication is right for you, it's not always so black and white and clear because not everybody is gonna tolerate the same medications the same way. And so sertraline may work really well for one person where escitalopram may work for really well for another person and vice versa. So when you're looking at medications and determining which could be the best one for you, you wanna look at which medication you can tolerate the best and that treats your target symptoms, the symptoms that you came into treatment for in the first place. So there you have it. That is my comparative review of sertraline and escitalopram. Do you have an experience with taking either of these medications? please share it with us. We learn from each other's experiences. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. It shows YouTube that our videos are valuable and it'll help get the message out so other people can see it as well. So I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey and I'll look forward to seeing you all next week.